This is Doug Walker, and with me is... Rob. And... Malcolm. And... Tamra. And... Jim. And... Papa Walker. And... and uh, Immortan Joe. <laughs> Impractical Joe, thank you. Um, and Chris Duckman's in this too, wow. Yeah, about that. Uh, this is my favorite review. All time. <laughs> I, I'll just come out and say it. This is the one I can watch a million times. Never gets Only of because of Angry Joe there. Yeah. No, well, that's what I was talking about. Angry Joe's review. This this review sucks. Um, you know, but... Uh, yeah, no, and this was one we took an extra week on it. Because just when I saw this movie, all I wanted to do was do something like it. I think everybody does. Like, everyone sees Mad Mag Fury Road, and it's like, I want to do something like that. You just get so pumped. Uh... It made me realize how much I actually really like the Mad Max movies, and it made sense to sort of talk about them all. Uh, so, yeah, all the... Including your favorite, Thunderdome. It is! Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, okay, Fury Road came out, and, and that's the best, but before that, it's fucking Thunderdome. <laughs> I, I want to say, my dad loves it most of all, and James Rolfe loves that one most of all, too. Well, so, then the okay. apple didn't fall far uh, from the tree, <laughs> did it? People with great taste. That's my fist, by the way. Um, that's me punching myself, yes. Um, and the one downside about this is that it, all of this is great, like, it's obviously green screen, but this is like, they're all on a separate level. So I film me, then I film Greg on the left, then I film Trevor on the right. I love Trevor because I don't know what the hell he's doing in all of these scenes. But he's always doing something. Rob, you who's, look amazing. Who's that lost? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can just watch all... See, I love ones that have a lot of people in it, because the group projects are the ones where if you get a lot of good people, they just all have their separate expressions and additional lines and stuff that they'll add in, and you can just watch it over and over, because you can watch everyone's... Look at Trevor would, there! That's amazing! Yeah. I was a huge Immortan Joe fan seeing the film, so this was kind of a dream come true. <laughs> And even though this film, everyone says it's defying, you know, redefining film and all this stuff, it still never hit number one. <laughs> it was still pitch perfect, too. Wow. Now, okay, and I should point out, this background, this is actually at a cemetery. Uh, this is some sort of, like, tomb or something. And I was almost thinking, like, maybe I can just dress up as the critic and go here. And I'm thinking, that's a really fast way to get thrown out of the cemetery. So <laughs> that's why it's all blue screen, but it, it looks really nice. Wow. See, I thought that was just a green screen effect. I mean, it is. I mean, I'm against a green screen, but the actual background is uh, oh, cool. is a tomb. Yeah, it's like this rocky tomb. Okay. <laughs> I love this shot. Hello, 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 <laughs> hello. <laughs> Somehow stacked on top of each other. <laughs> Here's my other favorite shot. This, this is just amazing. <laughs> How can you not get hard watching this? <laughs> I'm hard right now. <laughs> like you know what, can I just scoot away from Malcolm, yeah, please? Exactly. <laughs> you can't escape. Now hold on, I'm standing on my tippy toes here because Trevor is so tall. <laughs> 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 and and that somehow we had to get me in the car because originally we had it where we just opened the door and get in. But I'm like, wait, that's how am I going to get the car in there? How am I going to do it? So we just have a lightning strike us in there. Yeah. So I dug basically <laughs> sent me all the footage to do all of the sound effects. Except for the last third. But yes, you pre all the sound is raw pretty much. And uh, it... Almost everything got in except for one sound and it kills me. <laughs> Starting up Devil Boner's car was so freaking cool and he cut it out. Yeah, it was originally like this. Shudu! Shudu! It was a Harley <laughs> Davidson but, crossed with a sop, like World War One sop with camel biplane starting up. But, and it just sounded so Devil Boner. It's like. <laughs> so, so, but because you couldn't hear what I was quite saying. Uh, and, and the joke was a little funny. It, it was quiet. It really, all you, really all you hear is a little. Yeah. <laughs> you took my awesome sound effect and you pussified it. <laughs> Can I say how much I love the fact that nobody figures out it's a Roadrunner and Coyote? That was my biggest fear: is that people would put it together too fast, and that when it pulls out, everyone's like, "Oh, it's the Roadrunner Coyote!" All right. And talk about Jim J. Rise's incredible models. Yes. Uh, well, well, yours do. You helped on a lot of that too. Yeah, I did a lot of the painting, but the the coyote and the Roadrunner were all Jim. Yeah, yeah, it, look at that. I love that shot. That's an original. Devil Boner's car was my favorite to paint. Yeah, and then, that, and then, was the, that was the one that took twenty minutes to make. And yeah, that was that, <laughs> it, as always. It, that took us twenty minutes to do. I like spray painted it up, and Doug's like, "That's the most amazing thing ever." And of course, it's the one that we worked the least amount yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little. 
add on in editing that they would actually pass the car because <laughs> that wasn't in the script. And I was just like, oh, yeah, they should just pass them. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we got these these model cars, and, and Jim and Rob doctored them up. And then this is real car, obviously, and we just used green screen uh, in the background there. But then the the insides of, like, Devil Boner's car and Martin Joe's car, it, it's kind of like... They're just these boxes that you guys doctored up. Basically, the, yeah, the Smith real car seats and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put real car seats in. They were kind of like these plywood sets, yeah. and oh, we yeah, spray painted that. the outside and the inside. And remember, I was grabbing like I would spray paint them and just throw sawdust against it, try to give some sand texture to it. So. Tamara, you are so legitimately badass in this room. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> Thanks, <natural>. guys. <laughs> oh, shucks. Because it's one of my what? favorite costumes to make. It. Oh, man. Yeah. Favorite costume to date to wear, for sure. It's so cool. I love this, how he can't think of a line from the Mad Max movie, yet he is wearing a line <laughs> <laughs> from the first Mad Max film, Do You See Me Now? <laughs> Do you see me now, Toe <laughs> Oh no, that was I had to put that on there because I'm a huge fan of the first movie. I mean, there are, there's no bad Mad Max no, movies. No, it's just Thunderdome is not the best. It, it is no, <laughs> no Fury Row is the best. Then Thunderdome, obviously, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> okay, who here thinks Thunderdome's the best? I'm raising hey, my hand. Hey, okay, so we got two. Jim. I actually think road, uh, the Road Warriors is the best. Thank you. I'm with you. <laughs> but now you have Fury so Row. Two, so two. That leaves Malcolm and Tamara. What about us? I didn't see the rest. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God! And you're Furiosa. Road. Fury Road, so. <laughs> all right, well, how about we all just come raise and say Fury, Fury Road's the best? Yes, I think <laughs> yeah. we agree on that. But it's funny because I have seen people who've seen the movie and they're like, well, that's impressive, but I mean, is it even really a movie? It's just one big chase. And it's one of those things where that's kind of what I thought too, even though I was so blown away by it. But when <laughs> you actually look at there, there is a lot of story and character going on. It's just not. It's told visually. Yeah, it's told like how a a film movies should tell it. used to be. That reams and reams but of dialogue. Th this was all improvised. I just said, get our explodey stick, and then we just kept going. And I love when we just says, I never learned how to read! <laughs> <laughs> the hardest thing was getting these loops of, uh... Basically, I found out that car and truck noises don't sound like car noises, apparently. Yeah. It's the magic of cinema. So I ended up using a, uh... I think it was a P-15 Mustang, one of those World War II propeller there, planes. There's your, okay, these trips here, oh, those them. are real. Yeah. He just kept tripping, and I'm like, keep it. It looks amazing. And so he just keep going, yeah. Oh, 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 no, I'm playing a boss. Hi. What I like, too, depending on the TV or monitor you watch this on, is that it kind of looks like you do have a shaved head there, Tamara. <laughs> when you see the bun, you can't tell, but because oh. it's so dark. Well, yeah, let him yeah. know who's doing that. That's... Tamara's Rob, right? No, I, I don't know who that is. He, he just walked in off the street. Really? Really that weird. actually, that actually was me. I actually yeah. dropped Jeez, like though. sixty pounds. <laughs> yeah, Rob. I mean, I'm really yeah, impressed. It was amazing. Change your middle and name to learn Scallon. how to play heavy metal guitar. I, uh, super. Change my last name Rob to Scallon. Rob was so excited to play that role. You guys. <laughs> and he just had that guitar. <laughs> yeah, he had it he down. Did. He had the rocking out attitude. I just, you, you just kept making me do this random <laughs> hand acting. Just no crazier, wilder. Ended up turning into sign language by the end of it. I love the the, the, the <laughs> dinosaur <laughs> rockets. So they explode. When they... <laughs> They're so good. I love it because it's kind of like everything is in one way or another addressing the movie, talking about the movie, and that, that's another reason I love this review is that we're doing it without showing any clips, but we're constantly commenting on the movie through satire, through talking or visuals, and it's constantly having something, you know, to talk about aside from me just in front of a white wall saying, well, I hate this, I like this, I hate this. Uh, and I think that's why video criticism is just so much fun now, is that you do have these opportunities. And that's the, not a great reason these being in boxes and stuff, is that you can get these great angles, and you can track in, and you can do all these things where, even though we can do a lot with green screen, there's always a sense of just, oh, how, yeah, we're gonna have another straight on shot, look to the left, look to the right. Now this stuff was actually shot outside. Yeah. The, we uh, actually b brought a green screen outside, it was shot yeah. in like the loading bay. Just outside our studio. <laughs> Lovely Jason. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He never so much to each role that he <laughs> yeah. encompasses. Well, don't sell yourself short. Yeah, I was going to say, you do. Oh my god, aren't you devil boner? 
they look like something out of Airheads. <laughs> 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 we should we should point out, by the way, because some of this really needs some hardcore explaining. There is no such thing as Meninist. <laughs> like the name itself is not a real thing. Yeah, it's I, a satire. Yeah, at the most, I, I think it was wanted, like I still wanted to call them the Mennonites. K. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think at the most it was like a satire of extreme feminists. I think, but it's not an actual movement. So I love the fact that these guys so wanted to complain about something that right. they joined a movement that doesn't exist. <laughs> the, the hilarious part about it, it's like a self fulfilling satire, though. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. the YouTube comments on that are beautiful. Yeah, like... If you want just a glorious laugh, just read the comments yeah, on. <laughs> Get, this really is like, we just got everybody in there. There's Joanna, yeah. there's Beth. I'm just real. I was like, yeah, we really got the whole, <laughs> like, everybody we know. There's Rob and Tamara's glasses there. I mean, everyone got it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I was shooting behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> and some creepy guy with a camera pointing at head. <laughs> Well, and the fight, they're definitely what, because some people are like, oh, no, it's, it's, uh, there were no complaints about Mad Max following the orders of women and stuff like that. It was just, it was supposed to be like a joke or something like that. I've seen Tom Hardy asked in person yeah. what it was like, you know, it didn't suck to take orders from women and stuff right, like yeah. that. It's just like, it's real. Yeah. It's weird and it's probably yeah. a minority, yeah. but yeah. it's weird. <laughs> the, I guess the actual term would be MRA. Men's rights well, that was the only reason I didn't yeah. use the actual term because A, it was hard to find an actual term because none of them are organized or dedicated to right. really put something together. I feel and, like and a then, lot of that was a fringe group. And I know we had this discussion, but I felt by the time this review was coming out, that had come and gone and nobody cared. Right. It was kind of like a lot of the Star Wars issues. It's kind of like at first you're like, oh, I can't wait so we'd say that. And then you realize, oh, this is like a handful of but, idiots. But you like, know these guys are always around. It was like, well, if it's like this for women, why is it like it for men oh, and yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's totally, like, yeah. Totally. It, it, as I mean, men, true, but so is the clan. Well, I was going like, to say, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, as men, we really have gotten the shaft over the years. I mean, I think that's very clear. Um, I wake up every morning and say, oh, my God, it's so tough being a white male. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> so sucks. So hard. <laughs> Um, so it was you just have no like, idea, Malcolm, or no, Tamara. I, I None. <laughs> Struggles. <laughs> There's probably some white guy listening to this. See, they get it! They get it! <laughs> they understand! <laughs> oh, wait, that was sarcasm? <laughs> Traitor! <laughs> it was fun playing these roles, though, because I the thing is, like, I know people that are actually like this, so I had a place to pull from <laughs> to kind of, like, actually parody. You've been to cons with some of these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think everybody knows somebody that just loves to complain about something and make <laughs> yes. it look like a cause. And it's like, there are some very legitimate causes out there. Well, even like, you know, there is stuff that's like, you know, hey, how come men are persecuted for this, but whatever. But it's just very clear it's not that big a problem compared to like what women and a bunch of our groups have gone through. You should through. be a lawyer, Doug. Because yeah. <laughs> there are like men sometimes persecuted, prosecuted for some, but whatever. So, but, so, 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 yeah. No, 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 like, no. It, it happens. We should and, have world peace in these, the United States of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, there us. is bullshit that happens, but it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't think it's as big as you think it is. There, or There's much more important yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's bigger Best Michael Bay wig oh, ever. No, no. It, well, here's the thing, too. We made we made a conscious effort to make sure all the cars were models and the backgrounds were CG, like the actual movie, except for Michael Bay's car. That would be CG. <laughs> That's the only one that would look the fakest and look the lamest. So, yeah. So that was obviously a CG car. All, all yeah. the others are real models. That's great. Yeah, John's in it, too? Yeah, we really did get everybody for this. Oh, John Bailey. We met him at Momocon and nicest guy in the planet. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he's just pure awesome. And it's just always like, anything you need for me, just let me know, let me know. I'm totally, and he'll get me the stuff in like two seconds. And, and, and always in his Optimus Prime voice. Yeah. <laughs> if you need anything, Douglas, I will be there. That's so and, awesome. Here's the other reason I really want to do this review. Because I just love the idea. Well, that scene. You will ride eternal, shiny. shiny and I just, I lost it. I just lost my shit watching it. It just made me laugh so hard. Just, I imagine this going on. It just, what if he meant, what if he wasn't even paying attention? Oh, you got the spray stuff right in the yeah. mouth. How oh, is oh, it? Oh, oh, they're right. It tastes awful. It's the worst tasting stuff ever. <laughs> That goes on actual cakes, apparently. Yeah, no, it I, is nasty. I ended up, I had to go to a cake decorating store. And I bought two cans of those, and they just, it was one of those mornings where, like, I pretty much showed up in my pajamas, because it was, like, <laughs> right when the store opened, and I just look like shit, unshaven, they're like, you like a baker or something? I'm like, no, nah, it's actually a prop for a movie. We're doing, what would you need this for? I was like, ah, Mad Max, I, you know what, I'm a baker. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the funny, if you said Mamex, they would get. They probably gotten a million of those because they kept I selling out. Somehow, I don't think this middle-aged woman. Uh, <laughs> who looked like she probably had a hundred Thomas Kincaid paintings in her house <laughs> had seen Fury Road. Derek. Little do you know, there's a little shrine dedicated to Fury Road in it back there. It's so this Someone... model car and the the girl's this. car were the... will be talked about right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Segway. Nice. Yeah. And we're back. Anyway, those two cars were kind of the afterthought. Uh, I loved we, the red one, the boobs. It came, it came yeah. out okay, like, but they were actually purchased kind of mostly complete. There was no building, we just painted them. Um, well, they needed, like, suburban cars anyway. The funny thing is we were literally spray painting the truck, the mother of all noise truck, the speaker truck, like, literally, like, minutes before you were going to start shooting the model stuff. So it was like final day of shooting, and the, that was another one where it was like that one was like the easiest one to spray paint it, and it ended up being one of the better looking ones. And once again, it's like no work. Yeah. Well, don't tell anyone. Right. <laughs> you gotta be the. Well, I mean, you have to have an artistic eye like myself to make it happen. I mean, but genius just happens quick. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, what you doing in this movie, Dad? Nothing. I want. <laughs> Why the hell are you here? <laughs> <laughs> because I bring the objective point of view, not having been he's, here. He's, <laughs> he's Cato Kaling this thing. <laughs> right. Like, no, you think you worked hard, but you didn't. You all suck. <laughs> Man. Oh, young Mel Gibson. Right. <laughs> Before the crazy, so we think. Yeah. Or at least <laughs> so it, was, it was hidden fun. better. It was hidden. Well, better it hidden. was well, he did get Mad the Max, he came not in Sane beat up. Max. <laughs> You know, well, and the funny thing, uh, you know, there's been lots of times, Tamara, where we'll put you in, like, a badass role, and it's like, sometimes you just catch on right away, other times, like, it's like, you'll just say, I'm not badass, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that, I'm too girly, I'm too girly, but, like, with this, I mean, you just picked it up, like, so quickly, and, I mean, I don't think I well, had to give, like, any direction to Jim anything. put the, uh, right, the you... arm on, and she's yeah. like, that's badass, I can't believe this, this is amazing, <laughs> I can't wait to, to, to play this role. Yeah, when the outfit fits. But when somebody's like, be badass right now, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a direction, a motive to go off of. It's like yeah. this arm. That fucking metal arm. Well, yeah. can, you, can you do hyper without getting dressed up with the glasses and the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although just like this is obviously just uh, Trevor and Greg used over and over because we only had two bald guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> There's the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that one guy in the background. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that was improvised. Just uh, Beth going hallelujah. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> one of my favorite reads here. I'm not okay. <laughs> I just like, I put this plane crashing noise in from like an old goofy cartoon. This. <laughs> Malcolm, I love the face you constantly yeah. have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. keeps it consistent through the whole Yeah, yeah. I, I kept it contorted the whole time. And it's, it's hilarious because someone in the comments thought that I was Andre. Meadows? Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, really? They're like, no, no, that's me. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like, I definitely wouldn't see that, but when, during this first review, when he would make, like, a disgusted look, it's like, yeah, it is kind of that look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really disgusted look. It's like, yeah, it just... That was my motivation, just disgusted by everything. I'm just, just, just I'm just dissatisfied. Man, yes! Yeah, man, yes! I love Devil Boner in this review. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm shocked how much I've used him. You think he'd be a very one note, not get much use out of a character. Well, yeah. now we found out he's a secret feminist, so. Yeah. It's <laughs> giving him complexity. <laughs> that line, by the way, just, oh yeah, nobody left, just me. Uh, that was the one read I did for Rob because I forgot to get it from him and it was like 3 a.m. the night before. So I'm just like, I'll just do this myself. I probably had alike. just gone to bed after finishing yeah. this. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll just record it myself. Yeah, and this was this is when I realized this actually is a great movie. Uh, and when I realized it is just a Romer and Coyote cartoon, but it's like, good God, how long have those lasted? And how long have like people even talked about the Greek tragedy of the Roadrunner and the Coyote? You know, I mean, just you can sympathize with both sides. Yet it's so simple. 
You know, just because something is simple doesn't I mean there's like not to like think going there's on. more to it than that. Well, no, I, obviously, but I mean, but the general idea of just saying, hey, it's just one big chase, it's like a lot can go on in a chase. I mean, that's just, you could say like, well, can't there be more? But it's like, that's just the epitome of conflict. The chase is the framework through which they're the telling concept. their story. It's not just one big chase. Yeah, and I'm realizing more and more, especially, I don't know, something about recently, the more good people you get in actors that can really bring something to it, uh, you know, that can bring so much to a character without having to say anything, I, I think those are becoming more and more valuable. I'm thinking like Force Awakens and stuff. Like, that's not the world, it's good dialogue, but it's not the world's greatest dialogue, but you get those actors in there. And suddenly it just seems like, man, I just feel like I know everything about these people. Right, yeah. I just admired the purity of this film. Just... I feel like, particularly blockbusters, they're all like nine hours long now, and you get these... I like comic book movies, but some of them it's just like these long, grand speeches, and this whole movie is like, you know, four lines of dialogue. But I feel like <laughs> I saw an actual story that was told completely visually. Yeah. Which I don't see as much nowadays. Now everything is done through talking. It's the Christopher Nolan effect. <laughs> um, well, it's changed. I, I think it's switching around. I, I think that's kind of dying out, honestly. Um... But you know, I, I, the Matrix is one of the Lucas <coughs> yeah. prequels. They all—it's all just dialogue, wordy, wordy, wordy. That we should point out the stick shifts, by the way. That Jim, Jim made a different stick shift for every. Part, oh yeah, which I thought was amazing. Really cool. <laughs> this is my one regret. I wish what kills off in Practical Joe tied in a little bit more to something with the movie, but it's really just tying into our joke. Yeah. But it's such a it. funny joke. I love the mushroom. I love the mushroom. <laughs> yeah. It's so, good. It's so cool. It's hilarious. That, that was a guy who worked with us on uh, to boldly flee. I just told him what this is, what, what, what he, I wanted to make. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one, like nuclear explosions. You'd think, oh, I'll just look up nuclear explosion sound. Doesn't sound right. I actually had to get a building blowing up. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that's the funny thing. A lot of explosions, like from actual buildings blowing up or... A gunfire is don't sound like what you need half the time. You have to go find something else. That's why there's a Foley artist. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can't really blow up a building. The judge <laughs> said no. Not after that first time. This is why I always know it's about guys that try to talk shit about what they know what they're talking about, is that they actually never talk to the subject matter they're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they get really nervous, and they get, you know, it's like, and that explains why they would act that way, too, because it's like, they don't know how to act. <laughs> so it's, well, it's obviously their fault. I love Jason. Jason yeah. so Jason. Yeah. <laughs> And this, this is the big devil boater supposed feminist speech. Because yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing. I don't think, I don't know if he quote unquote is a feminist or sees himself as a feminist. I, he just knows these guys aren't men and he doesn't want to be a part of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he doesn't care if it's a woman or a guy or whatever. You just have to be cool and you're clearly well, not cool. I had, I had some fan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's always kind of what I thought. It's like, just... Just be cool. <laughs> I had some fan ask, like, what, you heard about this? And then, what do you think? And I'm like, yeah, you're going to tell a whole bunch of guys to not see fucking Mad Max. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> How about I watch what I damn well please? Well, and that's why I like, too, because I like the idea that, you know... Yeah, that he wouldn't be, quote-unquote, like, he's not going to be an activist, he's not going to go <laughs> parade stuff, but at the same time, he's just very naturally like, no, this is just normal. What some people call being a feminist, everyone else calls being normal. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, boy, Obama's hair is really grown there, isn't it? He's <laughs> got a fresh cut. I'm finally moving on. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Things. To the east side. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh Trevor the funny Trevor. thing I think Trevor contacted me like before just as I was writing this review and he's just like hey if you ever need me for anything by the way it was so much fun being in those reviews I'm like oh my god why wasn't I thinking of him for the fanboys or the war boys somebody said why is being a method actor a bad thing I'm like you have never worked with a method actor <laughs> it's like they are the character on and off camera it's... yeah and it's like I mean, okay, whatever. I mean, you want to try and be a better actor and you got to go through stuff. But I mean, there are people that are just like, no, my character's a jerk. 
on camera, so he's gonna be a jerk off camera. No, don't do that. Because there's so many actors we can get who don't have to do that. <laughs> well, Bruce, Cam hire them. Bruce Campbell always told that story about Gene Hackman just disappearing off the set of The Quick and the Dead because he wanted to get into his character. And then, like, at the very end, he, like, came up to him and was like, oh, it was great working with you, Bruce. And Bruce was like, well, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Max. Max. But I wish you do Max. quick eye blink. So good, Doug. <laughs> it weakens me. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stand a little bit off screen. Never, never, never directly. There's this incredible Michael Caine interview where he talks about how blinking weakens you. And yeah. in a sense, he's not wrong, but he just says it in such so a pretentious, pretentious way. <laughs> yeah. but, but for comedy, it's amazing. It's I don't know, I'm not sure this is my favorite review, but I think this is the most fun I had working on a review. Well, it's also the hardest we was, worked. It was probably, four, it yeah, was like, yeah. what, four weeks of working? Th three, like, yeah, I want to say three. Yeah, three we had an yeah, extra week, yeah. 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 But I thought we were building stuff even a little bit before that. Like, we I, started, started yeah, I started collecting stuff yeah, pretty early on. Yeah, because we knew we were going to do this. I was going to build a lot of the props anyway, so it just worked out. <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> just for fun, well, you did a great job. I wanted to build the Immortal yeah. Joe Man. Yeah, they were amazing. <laughs> I'm going to cosplay as her the con coming up. Hells yeah. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Later, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.